Hey everybody, how we doing? So we are back for another episode and uh, we're gonna do a quick update on uh, on the Chevy and then we're gonna get back on the truck over here and uh, we'll see what's next. So let's take a look at what we got. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> Okay, so uh, been working on this this week and got uh, got this part done. I still need to uh, cut these pieces and put them in, uh, but decided to move some things around in here. I put the car on that side and I put the truck on this side of the garage because that side of the garage I can back straight out out my driveway and uh, out the front. And it's kind of a tight turn around there. Plus, my wife does not like me parking my other van up front. So, I can block this thing in and not worry about having to get this out. But a couple more things on the Chevy I did. Um, uh, what did I do? Seat belts bolted down. That was one. Um, got the temperature gauge in. Uh, that was another one. Uh, my new radio would not work. And so, after... Uh, a long time of trying to figure out what it was, I figured out that um, I had grounded one of the speaker wires uh, to a bracket when I screwed it up under the dash. So we got that fixed, we got a working radio. Uh, but one thing I did find out is I had the wrong fan on this thing because the, the engine turns clockwise. But the water pump pulley turns counterclockwise with, with that serpentine belt on it. And I had bought this pulley for clockwise, not thinking, and it was actually turning this way. And it was not moving any air, which I was wondering why is this thing seem like it's getting warm so fast. So that was the scoop. So I got to get another fan, but uh, went through and blood the brakes one more time. They're doing good. So it is just, in fact, I got the uh, insurance, uh, email today saying they need pictures of it and i just got to pay that and they'll send me a quote and then i can send off for my historic plates but we are just about ready to cruise this baby so but anyway rest of this video is on this and uh i've been on this all day moving cars around and working on that thing so we're gonna get back on this thing uh, tomorrow after church and we're gonna get that finished up and then I don't know if we're going to get a start on the grill or not. I'd, I'd like to, um, but we'll see how it goes. So, okay. So that's it for just a quick update for today. And then uh, it, it's working just like it did on the other side. I just kind of completely copied the other side of where I made my cuts and where I made my welds. And it just laid right in there and everything good. Now, um, Somebody had said uh, uh, something about moving the headlights closer together and using a, a GM trim ring, which I, I had looked at some of the, like a Grand Prix, some of the other ones that have the two square headlights. Uh, I don't know why, I just, I like them further apart like that. And I wanted to build my own thing. So I thought it would look kind of goofy with the, you know, all the handmade stuff in there and then have a, a precast trim ring in there. So. But thank you for the suggestion. Always appreciate the suggestions and uh, sometimes I use them. So, okay, we'll pick this back up tomorrow. All right, hey everybody. So, um, uh, this is done, this is done. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the rest of this front is gonna look like. So I had this idea for a slanted grill in my head. And, uh, you know, just kind of looking at the old 60s vans and. And they did have a smaller grill area, so a couple decisions I gotta make is, I don't know if you can see from that angle, but like these these headlight buckets, they, they come out at like a 45 from here, and they go down, then they 45 back in. So I wasn't sure, I've got this round shape over here. Do I wanna continue this all the way over to here 
you know, bend those two angles and have this a flat piece. And then underneath that, you know, go in whatever that is, three quarters of an inch and then, and then down. So that I'm not sure about. I, I, I like that idea, but I also like the idea of rounding this edge and then going back down and having this piece in here flat and not angled out, kind of give you the, like a pod on both sides. So this is the first grill drawing I came up with. I'm not real crazy about it. It looks too small to me and it's, I guess it's kind of hard to tell because you don't have everything else blocked in here. Um, but anyway, that's one of them I came up with. And then I thought, you know, I like the angles, but you don't really see that shape anywhere else on here. So I'm wondering if that just kind of, if that's kind of an eyesore and throws it off because you don't see that angled shape continued anywhere else. So I made another one. I made a square one and I made it a little bit bigger. So let's, uh, let me kind of eyeball this one on here. And I just got some tape and hold it on the back. Like that one any better or not? I got a little crooked for one thing. Hmm. So I got inch and a half tubing, so it's going to have to be kind of angled. I mean, I'm going to round the edges on that one, and then I'm going to have. Uh, I got enough or not, but I got some expanded metal we're going to put behind that. That one actually kind of fit. <clears throat> no, I don't know about I'm not crazy about either one of them really, but like I said, it's hard to tell till you get that other metal on there and see where you're gonna be. But this is gonna be an attaching point for all the metal around it, so I kinda wanna do this first. Um, This was smaller. Let me do that in a second. <clears throat> It's not really going to be my primary source of air intake for the radiator. Because what I'm going to do is we're going to put a scoop under that bumper. And all the air coming in this way, it'll come in here, but it'll also get scooped and pushed into the radiator. Which is how my 65 Dodge A100 was. It had like a belly pan under there. And I'll tell you what, I found out the hard way. I didn't even know what that thing was because when I got the van, it was in pieces. I put it all together and I could not keep that thing cool until I got looking at that pan and it was kind of beat up. And it's like, you know, this goes under here. So I made another one. And once I did that, it started cooling. So I took an inch and a half off the side. Now it's a little offset, that center piece.
Well, you can analyze it to death or you can just go for it. And if I'm looking at this, or I'm looking at that, I think I like that better. And it's hard to tell that it's drawn on a piece of cardboard too, so. Um, let's go ahead and make that. We got plenty of metal. If uh, we don't like it when it's all done, we'll hack it out of there and do something else. But I'm thinking, <clears throat> like I said, I gotta figure that out too, but I'm kind of thinking that old, older style GMC emblem, maybe right there in the center of this top piece would look kind of cool. Not period correct with the square headlights, but hey, I'm I'm building my thing. All right, let's build that and uh, see what it looks like when it's actually in metal and uh, see if that looks better. Okay, I'm gonna cut some pieces and we'll uh, weld that thing together and uh, see how it comes out. Oh, also one more thing, I got my fan in last night so i got an 18 inch counterclockwise fan for the excuse me for this thing <coughs> huge difference you could stand in front of this thing running before and you couldn't feel any airflow coming across that radiator now you can stand right here and your shirts and shorts are doing this i mean that thing is sucking and moving some air across that radiator and across that motor so very happy with that i think that's going to solve my problem um got my insurance card yesterday so i am going to go down to the license office probably today or tomorrow and send off for my historic plates and we're going to be on the road <clears throat> okay back to this uh let's go ahead and measure out some pieces cut them and uh we're going to see what uh, what kind of disaster we can make here. All right, so I got all my pieces cut here. I need to take a flapper wheel and clean them up. Mm. And it's going to go... We're going to make nice rounded corners on this thing. Uh, I think I'm going to do that with a piece of pipe. But we're going to end up Something like this. It's pretty utilitarian looking, but you know, that's all right. This guy in the middle. Round these corners off. I think it's gonna look good. I'll bring and set this up a little bit in the back so we can get that, uh, uh, expanded metal behind it. But, um, yeah. All right, well, let me clean all these up and uh, clean up the ends. Uh, we'll flap a wheel and we'll tack this thing together and see what we got. Tell you what, I'd break out the old chop saw. I really don't like that thing because, one, it's screaming loud. And, uh, two, that thing seemed to generate a ton of grinding dust. I think maybe I just need a different wheel for it. So it's a 14 inch chop saw. If anybody knows of a, any kind of, you know, grinding wheel for metal you can put in there or cut off wheel that is a little more dust free. Um, you just use that thing a few times and it's like everywhere in here, so. All right, anyway, back to this. Let's, uh, let's get going on this and see what we got. All right, so I got the initial frame welded together. <clears throat> and um, I'm about to recut these because I was thinking we'd go, you know, three of these in here and then this piece like this. But I think I want that all to be uniform. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and weld those three in there and then we'll cut this down into three little pieces and, you know, so we can tack it down there flush. But uh, no big deal there. And then I found a piece of pipe. Um, I think it's an old steering column. But I think I can get four 
pieces out of this and we're just gonna make kind of make them so they'll fit in there you can slide it in there and then we'll round those corners off and we'll, we'll make some nice rounded corners on it too I think that'll look pretty good okay so let me get these uh, let me get these bars welded in and uh, then we'll take a look at uh, where we're going from there all right so I think we're looking pretty decent here got some uh, you know finished welding and grinding to do but uh, you know I like the way it's coming out <clears throat> so I want to go ahead and do these corners and uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cut some sections of pipe and um, I'll go ahead and have to show you how I do one of them after I get this cut and cleaned up um, another one of these things I've never done before but it just kind of seems to make sense that this is uh, how it's gonna work so uh, we're gonna give it a shot okay back in a minute all right so we'll go ahead and do this first one live and um, so if I measure the inside diameter of this tubing I need an inch and a quarter and I only need half of this tubing to go in there to make that curve so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut this piece off inch and a quarter on the chop saw but first I'm gonna make a couple of cuts down the side and we'll cut it in half and when I cut that off on the chop saw I'll have two pieces so let's do that first <clears throat> not a whole lot of pipe here but I think I can get two slices off of it Let's use this irritating thing. Told you that thing was loud. You find my uh, little dagger right here.
That's a steering column off an old 49 Plymouth I had. Shut this off till that air compressor shuts off. Okay, that thing is painful loud. Um, so that old 49 I had, if you're interested in that car, that's a pretty cool build. If you go way back in my early videos before I really even was doing videos like this, I would just drop one once in a while. <clears throat> and I usually didn't narrate them. I'd like make a slideshow and put music to them. There's a video of that car. The first motor I put in that car was a, I bought a uh, vandalized 94 Taurus SHO. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that Yamaha engine. It was in those SHOs, but them little things were fast. It was front wheel drive. So I pulled the motor, the wiring harness, and the PCM I got a five-speed from a Ford Ranger, which after I had to modify the bell housing a little bit to bolt up to it, and I had that uh, Taurus SHO six-cylinder with a five-speed in that car, and, and it was pretty cool. Um, I kept it that way for a while, and then uh, I decided to change it and put a big block Chrysler in it, and then I put a big block in it, and I think. There's a couple of videos of that in there. And then uh, I ended up selling the car. I think it's out in California now somewhere. But it was a 49, <clears throat> 49 Plymouth Business Coupe. So like the uh, like the three window. But uh, check it out. That's on my early videos. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe today if you haven't already. You can see what I'm doing. We're kind of flattening this out. Actually, I made this maybe go a little wider on the next one. But we'll fill that in. And what I'm gonna do is make a cut like this. Is. So I'm going to cut that off of this and then we'll get this tacked in there and then we'll cut the other side off. So. <clears throat> I think I unplugged my cut off.
right now we're just going to do it like that. We'll kind of dress it up with the uh, flapper disc once we get it in here. So it's going to kind of go. Like that. Actually, I think I want to cut a little bit more off of it and stretch it out a little bit more. Better hold on to that with something when I try to cut. I want this thing grabbing it out of my hand and ripping half of my flesh off with it. What this little welding table I put together has really been handy. top edge first. Get my welding gun in my hand so we can tag this. screwdriver in here to hold that out and just tap that in just a finger.
Lisa. Tax down there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this line, weld this line. pretty hot because this is a uh, pretty thick stuff okay now let's take the uh, flapper wheel knock this thing off and see what we got pretty good and we hit a little bit more on the final but uh, <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and weld these two up and then we'll grind this whole thing down and see what she looks like I think it's looking pretty good oh that ain't good not a good thing to be laying where your sparks are going
scared I want to close up. Well, while we're doing that, let's do this. <clears throat> Pretty good looking radius corner right there. For my first try. So, I got three more of those to do. I got a little more welding here to do. Uh, we're gonna try to get the screen in the back. So let me go ahead and shut this off and we'll do all that. And we'll come back and kind of take a, a look at what the final product looks like. All right, back in a bit. Okay, so there we go. Um, you know, it's hard for me to visualize completely what it's going to look like until I get the rest of the metal in there. But but I think it's going to be good. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be. So I uh, kind of thought about it. And what I am going to do is around the other side of these headlights, like those headlights, and then we're gonna have a little step back and bring this down flush. So this is gonna actually have to come out more. I just got some clamps on it there now. Um, and then we'll do like a roll pan up from the bottom. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do this weekend, I'm uh, not gonna do a whole lot, it's Easter weekend. We'll probably get out here Saturday and try to do some. Um, but I am probably gonna take I need to get, I want this edge here, that sheet metal to come to this, either the center or, well, probably the back of this. 
So I need to get that out to there and then that should bring this metal down to the back of that. So kind of get all of that lined up. I think what I may end up doing is cutting some little pieces of round rod and just going from here to here just to kind of give me something to, to base that off of. Um, so I'm not 100% sure which piece we're going to do next. Uh, may work from the bottom up. I'm not sure. So, But anyway, we're making progress. I think it's coming along good. Um, yeah, so that's where we are today. And I will uh, appreciate everybody coming along. And let's go inside, get a word from the Lord, and we will pick this back up uh, this weekend. Hey everybody, thanks for coming along, checking out the video today. So uh, I'm a little torn on what this grill is going to look like once we get uh, the sheeting on there. But uh, you know what, I'm just going to continue on, get the whole front sheeted, kind of finish the picture in my head, and then see uh, see what it looks like. And if I hate it, I'll change it. And uh, if I don't hate it, then we'll keep it. So um, so I uh, probably won't be doing a whole lot this weekend. I may I'll get out there Saturday for a few hours, but you know, this is Easter weekend. So this is like uh, uh, the Christian Super Bowl. This is the biggie for us. So i uh, be doing a lot of stuff at church, stuff with family, that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, uh, th this week's message. <clears throat> I have been taking a, a Bible study class at, at our church. We are a Southern Baptist church, and the uh, the Bible study I've been taking is understanding the Baptist faith and message, and um, excellent class taught by, um, you know, one of our, our uh, um, esteemed people of the church who is a, uh, a uh, pastor and a, uh, you know, a PhD theologist, and um, uh, Bruce Clark, and uh, really really great stuff. So I've learned a lot about this uh, week. Um, we really focused on how our, our church, the, our Christian church, uh, is the same in many ways as other Christian churches and uh, and some of the ways we're different. So, um, you know, we looked at Lutheranism and Catholicism and, and kind of the history of where it all came from. And we all kind of came from the same church, uh, you know, way, way, way back when, you know, when the apostles were starting to uh, starting to preach the message. And we talked about how, um, you know, how some of the separation occurred. But uh, anyway, I'm, you know, maybe over the next several messages, we'll look at a little bit of that. But uh, so one question that people may have who, who aren't Christian that watch this channel is, is uh, what, what, what do you guys believe about the Bible exactly? So there's a... Um, um, Right here on the first page of this book that we're using, um, there is a, a statement from the Baptist Faith Message, which is um, a, a statement of our church, um, one of our articles, that uh, not, not just our church, our location, the Southern Baptist Church as a whole. And um, so this is what we believe about the Bible, and this is really well written. It says, The Holy Bible was written by men divinely inspired and is God's revelation of himself to man. It is a perfect treasure of divine instruction. It has God for its author, salvation for its end, and truth without any mixture of error for its matter. Therefore, all scripture is totally true and trustworthy. And, uh, and uh, all Christian churches believe that. It reveals the principles by which God judges us and therefore is and will remain to the end of the world the true center of Christian union <clears throat> and the supreme standard by which all human conduct, creeds, and religious opinions should be tried. All scripture is a testimony to Christ, who is himself the focus of divine revelation. Um, very well said, I think. Um, you know, I, I have always believed, I was raised Catholic and uh, was Methodist for a while, and then uh, was nothing for a long time, and then uh, uh, became Baptist, and uh, and I really think that um, all Christian faiths out there, we we need to look at 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 what we have in common and how we can 
work together in an ecumenical way. You know, we are in a world that's uh, in a whole lot of hurt and a world that is uh, rejecting the Lord and rejecting faith. And, um, you know, this country, I think, is getting is getting more and more scary. The uh, amount or the, I don't want to say amount, the uh, intensity by which that faith is being rejected. But it's our, it's our job to preach this and to to tell everyone, non-believers, about uh, about the sacrifice of Christ and about salvation, and uh, and to support each other. So, uh, and the way things are nowadays, I just I think it is so important that. You know, we may have loved ones or friends who, who are also Christians, but in a different church than we are. And there may be some differences in, in those faiths, but it is so important that we work together on this message. And that, um, you know, especially in the, the, the shape our world is in right now. So uh, division for us is, uh, is a victory uh, for the enemy, and we don't want that. So... Uh, Anyway, that's that's what I've got for today. Maybe we'll pick up a little bit more on this uh, on the next one. So let's have a quick word of prayer, and uh, we'll end this one. Father, I thank you uh, um, so much for your for your your word to us and uh, the Bible, the, which is uh, your love letter and instruction to us. And uh, just pray for for all of the, us who are out there that. Uh, belong to some Christian faith that we can we can find our our commonness that um, commonness within uh, the realm of your teaching that is that is correct and that uh, that we can work together to help uh, minister to a world that is in great need and uh, we ask this in the name of your precious son Jesus amen all right so hit like hit subscribe and um, I'll catch you on the next one